Another market closing live stream. It's been kind of a crazy day. Uh, the uh, indices again are at record highs. Yet again, we've got sort of a high multiple and EV sell off. It's a little wild. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull up the sticks and get right into them today. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, Bitcoin under 53,000 at the moment at 52.9. We also, let's see here, we have uh, Dogecoin sitting at 30.6, so really holding steady, still waiting for that move. One day it'll move to a dollar. Uh, and uh, Ethereum holding pretty stable at 27.29. Let's go ahead and see uh, what's going on in the sticks themselves. Uh, and then we do have Amazon earnings today. Let's go. So look at this. Uh, BTX was up like 70% yesterday, down 24% today, falling into the close. Momentum trade, Microvision down 13.5%, also falling into the close. Lift, all of a sudden down 10%. We did not see that this morning. Mm, looks like uh, Labor Secretary says, Secretary says gig workers should be classified as employees. That's crazy because we just we had a court case about this in California about them not being classified as employees. So that's a that's a big hit to uh, Uber and Lyft. Lyft taking in a substantial brunt here at 10.4% uh, down, Uber down 5.4, a big digital down 10, looks like a Bitcoin uh Bitcoin plays having a rough time here. By the way, at 2 p.m. today, we will be doing a, uh, an interview with the CEO of Hut 8 Mining. Uh, they are uh, down 8.26% uh, today. They're an OTC stock. We're going to get a little bit of a look into uh, what it's like to operate a, a Bitcoin mining company. We've had Big Digital on. We've had Voyager Digital on. Uh, we've had MP Materials on. Obviously, Kevin O'Leary, Robinhood CEO, lots of different CEOs, Matterport, uh, you know, M1 Finance, you name it. And uh, Hut8 will be uh, giving us some perspective on uh, Bitcoin mining and mining plays. So uh, anyway, uh, TDOC down 8.5%, uh, Marathon and uh, Riot, some obviously the very popular mining place here, down 8% right here with Hut8. C3AI down 7.63%. Looks like that potential move to the upside uh, really is, is, is starting to feel a lot of weight or burden, so to speak. I mean, look at this. You've got essentially the straight down sell-off on C3AI, multiple false start here. I mean, false start, false start, false start, and uh, regularly getting beat up to the downside again or beat down to the downside again, I should say. Mind Medicine down 5.91%, drop in the bucket relative to the incredibleness uh, that uh, that has been uh, you know the stock essentially over the last week here. Neo reports earnings today down nine point. Uh, I'm sorry, down four point nine percent. Leading into earnings, earnings will be uh, at uh, scheduled for five p.m. Eastern time, which is right about when that HUD eight interview will be. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch up on a Neo. ChargePoint at down four point six seven percent. Invite down four point five three percent. Shopify four point two eight. Canoe down four, Peloton at 99, actually recovering intraday during the course member live stream. We saw Peloton down uh, in the range of uh, 95, 94-ish. Uh, yeah, look at this. So, uh, oops, we're on the day chart here. Let's go down to the one minute. Where was it that we were seeing? Yeah, yeah, there. Okay, 96.55. That's the number that we saw. 96 uh, in, in these uh, these lower ranges over here. Uh, in uh, the 96 range, jeez. Canoe down 4%, Upstart uh, down 3.9%. Sundial uh, also moving down. Lots of momentum, SPACs, but then you also mix in. You got DocuSign down, you down. You got cybersecurity down, General Motors down, Matterport's down. But then again, that's what the SPACs. Arc Innovation down 2.8%. Tesla moving down 2.5%. Not as bad as it was at one point. Got to 6.68% at one point during the day. The mid part of today was uh, certainly... The worst. Uh, we'll see how long this continues. But golly, it's this constant give and take, give and take. It's it's uh, it's pretty uh, exhausting to say the least. Coinbase two ninety five. We got uh, Facebook still up seven point five nine percent. With let's go to all stocks here. With Nokia leading at ten point eight percent. Hydro Farm up eight point eight seven. Facebook. Uh, 7.57 cheesecake still holding on to that higher 6% gains. But, ah, look at Pinterest rebounding. Pinterest coming back 2.89% after yesterday's sell-off. 
did uh, create a great buying opportunity for Pinterest and uh, also end phase, especially since it's just guidance. It's not even actual. It's just, hey, things might slow down a little and market freaks out. Uh, however, end phase is down what Pinterest is up today. So uh, if somebody here is donating $10 to ask if IBM is a good dividend, uh, is a good idea to secure the dividend for life. Geez, you know, you got to really ask yourself, what do you want in your portfolio? And this is not a question I can answer for you, but you have to determine yourself. Do you want, uh, do you want dividends? Do you want more cash flow getting taxed? Are you trying to build your wealth or are you trying to build cash flow? And uh, you got to ask yourself, what's your priority, cash flow or wealth building? You can always turn wealth into cash flow when it's time to start uh, planning on retiring. Yeah. All right. So, and, and in terms of IBM itself, I think, you know, IBM has obviously been one that uh, a little bit like Intel, you know, people aren't really happy with its uh, slow, uh, slow, uh, slow to innovate progress. But who knows? I could always turn around beat expectations. Let's jump on over to CNBC for a moment. In the durability of these business models, right? I mean, we, we sort of know mm -hmm. that it's already kind of nip and tuck in terms of whether they can really get scale uh, to profitability, uh, whether it's an Uber or Lyft or something like that. And so- uh, Doesn't even make sense. Kevin loves crypto interest, but not qualified divvies. Uh, no, I, I it, look, the thing about crypto interest is, would you, if you're gonna own crypto, would you rather have interest on it or not? <laughs> like it's the same investment. You, you can't draw a parallel between that and qualified dividends. When you invest in companies that are paying rich dividends like AT&T, generally you're making a decision to go for less growth and more dividends. But even if I got a mix of both, I don't want dividends. I want the big gains that I'm going to see over the next five, 10 years in companies like Tesla and some of, of course, our other big plays, whether that's Redfin, Etsy, uh, and, and uh, some of our other favorites. We don't have to go through the whole list. Now let's listen to CNBC watching for well the street is expecting a second 100 billion dollar quarter from amazon continued strength in e-commerce aws and it's expanding advertising business that is giving that facebook google duopoly some competition q2 guidance key of course as amazon looks towards that reopening and we may also hear more on how it's thinking about labor yesterday's pay boost a sign of changing times at the company amazon has always prided itself on being customer obsessed, but the company increasingly having to account for other stakeholders like employees and merchants. Back to you. Deirdre Bosa, <clears throat> Deirdre, thank you. Steph, remind us where you are on Amazon, which is up about a quarter percent into the print. I, I own it. Um, it's not a big overweight, but it's a big weighting in my benchmark. So it's a fair p position size. Um, I think they're going to crush it. I really do. Um, because if you look at the U.S. retail um, e-commerce numbers, January, February, January, February and March, they were 62 percent in January, 55 percent in February and 57 percent in, in March. And we know that these guys have a decent amount of market share and it's actually growing. So I think they're really going to do very, very well on the retail e-commerce side. I think the bogey on AWS is like 30 percent growth. I think they could probably hit that. Um, but the law of large numbers are starting to hit them there. But they're still the leader. So I I can't see why they don't crush it here today. It's obviously going to be about guidance. It's obviously going to be how the new CEO carries himself next quarter when he starts. And, and we'll see how it goes. But I think this is a name that you certainly want to have exposure in for the long term, given the total addressable markets. <laughs> and, and Mike, it's not on discount uh, per se, but it's sort of plateaued since last summer. Yeah, almost exactly flat to where it peaked uh, in September. Now, it had a, just an absolutely tremendous run into that high. So, it, you know, this is not unusual for an Amazon over 20 four years, it's basically had these huge sprints higher and then some sideways action. But it's interesting, if since September 30th, the uh, top line estimates for this quarter are up like 12%, maybe not enough. Uh, but the, the EPS estimate, the earnings estimate is really not budged much at all. I mean, people don't necessarily trade it on the earnings print, but it's interesting uh, that people just are not assuming there's a whole lot uh, of that top line going to fall down to the bottom line. Two minutes ago in the trading day, Mike, what do you see in the market internals? Yeah, sort of mixed. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, the top line index is trading up to their highs, but you see more uh, volume yeah. in declining stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. Let's pull off that rec uh, that review here while we got um, 90 seconds left. I want to look at the 10-year uh, treasury. Take a look at the pattern that we've got going on right now. We do have a decline in the 10-year treasury, uh, and uh, we are seeing... Uh, Bitcoin kind of trace with it right now. You know, Bitcoin had, has been running over the last few days, uh, kind of tracing back down as we are potentially seeing those inflation expectations subside again. Uh, it's, it, I mean, we've been saying this for 
for about a week now since I was talking about that this weekend, that uh, there's a correlation between the 10 and the BTC and, and very few people talk about it. Uh, it's really, uh, really incredible. Uh, something that is truly astonishing, though, is the fact that Apple went red on a day that it totally destroyed. I mean, the day after it literally destroys earnings, like nobody was even close on their estimates. They're red today. It's a sin. Uh, it's 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 literally a sin. It's uh, it's very, very sad. Jeez, uh, I don't even have my phone. I was just going to get on Robinhood and buy some Apple, but I don't even have my phone, so I can't even get on Robinhood. Whatever. <laughs> just 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 for the principle, you know, just for the principle right now, just for principle, we're throwing 20 grand on Apple. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's just do it really quick. Quick, 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 quick. Markets closing. I'm going to do it. Go, 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 go. Uh, 200 shares, 200 shares. Point two percent, and the buy, 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 buy. red down zero point four percent. We do have Bitcoin pulling back a little bit today, below foot fifty three k, and we get the ten year yield pushing <laughs> up uh, to one sixty four uh, at the close. Uh, at the close, era, we are up for two thirds of one percent on the S and P, point seven percent on the Dow, and point two percent on the Nasdaq. Record closing high there for the S&P 500. Another strong day on Wall Street. Welcome back, everyone, to Closing Bell. I'm Sarah Eisen, along with Wilford Frost and Mike Santoli, CNBC Senior Markets Commentator. Take a look at how we finished up the day on Wall Street. The Dow gaining 242 points near the highs of the session. Had a nice little final hour of trade there. For the week, we're pretty much flat uh, year to, or excuse me, week to date. Keep in mind, we're going in one last day, one last trading day of the month of April. We are set for the strongest month for stocks since back in November. S&P 500 closes up about seven tenths of a percent and closes at a new all time high. What took us there? Communication services. Thank you, Facebook and a number of other media names. Financials also at the top of the list. Technology, healthcare. Those were the two losing sectors. As for the Nasdaq, it, had, it set an intraday record high earlier today, closed up about a quarter of a percent, a little less than that. We also saw an intraday record high for the Dow Transports and for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Didn't quite close there. The small caps actually lagged today. They finished the day lower. Investors are now turning their attention to a trio of big earnings. We will have instant analysis of results from Amazon, Twitter, Gilead, as soon as all of those numbers come out. First up, let's talk about this record close. Stephanie Link from Hightower is still with us. Paul Hickey from Bespoke Investment Group joins the conversation. First to you, Mike, on okay, another We're going to pull off their conversations because we are waiting for Amazon. Oh, they're out. Okay, Amazon sales, $110 billion. The estimate was $108. Uh, that is a slight beat. We've got 94% uh, of Amazon workers would recommend their job to a friend. Fine. Operating income, four point. Okay. Sees Q2 operating income of 4.5 billion to eight. Expected 699. That's actually a little bit lower. Uh, sees uh, sales. Okay. The, sorry. That's Q, That's Q2. I'm sorry. That's Q2. Uh, dang it. Hold on. That's the Q2 forecast. Okay. Hold on. I'm a little slow right now. There it is. Okay. All right. Well, CNBC beat me to it this time. 108.52 versus the 104 estimate. Here we go. EPS came in at 15.79 versus 9.69 estimated. That's really good. Uh, sales Q1, 108.5 billion, net of 8.1. Sees Q2 sales of 110 to 116. EPS of 15.79, really, really good. Product sales coming in at 57, for, uh, 57 billion. Uh, 57.49 billion operating margin at 8.2 percent i feel like that's been going on we gotta check that out uh it, it, let's see here let's listen to cnbc while i digest As more speak, this is uh, good aws coming in at 13.5 billion the forecast was for 13.9 billion i believe so maybe it's 0.09 13.09 bro came in at 30.6 billion the forecast was 28.9 and north american revenue came in at 64.4 billion uh, just behind 66.4 billion uh, as the estimate uh, uh, for that line. Sorry, I'm, I'm comparing those to the uh, second quarter. See, they're having trouble reading it off just as much as I am because look, this is literally what it looks like. It's it, it's literally a disaster when it comes in. Uh, it's it's so so confusing when it comes through Amazon. But uh, but yeah, let's uh, we'll go back and listen in here. On each of the individual lines on revenue, uh, a beat on the top line, therefore for revenue, and a big beat. On the bottom line and mike jumping five percent in after hours trade yeah um you know as you're just mentioning 
That EPS beat is huge. 15.79 versus 9.69 expected. Woo! That's going to be good for my Amazon options. That's great. And I need some good uh, for uh, uh, for the options right now because today was a nasty day. Actually, the last two days have been pretty nasty for options. But uh, yeah, online store sales, uh, net sales were $52.9 billion versus estimates of $50.63 billion. Uh, AWS sales coming in at 13.5. That's above the estimate of 13.09. Services, 51. North American segment sales, 64.3 billion. Uh, total total sales, again, 108.5 versus 104 in the estimate. Uh, that still puts uh, North America at over 55% of all of COVID revenue or of all of Amazon's revenue. Which actually, if you think about it, 45% outside of uh, North America. Actually, probably that's pretty good too. You good spread. About, but it's international exposure. And the stock was only up six percent into um, you know just it today into the print. So I can see it easily playing catch up uh, to Facebook. And let's go check sticks real quick here. Five point uh, about five percent in the after hours right now. Uh, Microvision does report today as well. MP Materials down two point seven one percent in the afters. All right, let's keep listening to the Amazon, and I will get the other earnings as well. Down, there will probably only be two billion versus four billion in the last quarter, so that's going to help a lot too. But we want to see some of the details underneath the surface. But this stock should be rallying on this note. And these are really good numbers. Big guide as well for revenue for Q2, one ten to one sixteen. The forecast was one oh eight. Dear Bo oh. Deirdre Bose has been uh, digging through uh, the rest of the uh, release for us as well. Okay, Twitter's out. Revenue came in at one point oh four billion versus one point oh three estimated. That is a slight beat. Uh, international mobilized daily active users of 162 million. EPS coming in at eight cents. Advertising revenue, 899 million. Average uh, monetizable daily users, 199 million. Okay, mon monetizable daily active users, 199 million for average, but average international monetizable daily active users, 162 million. Okay, uh, then we've got. Uh, growth rate may be low double digits for the rest of the year. So also giving kind of soft guidance that their growth rate will slow down for the rest of the year. This is kind of the same crap that we saw at Pinterest and uh, and end phase. We got uh, Q1 revenue again coming in at 1.04 billion. Revenue jumps 28%. Uh, but it did uh, and did slightly beat EPS came in at 16 cents versus 14 cents estimated. Okay, now they're hitting Twitter, but we're going to move on uh, Gilead. Uh, the full details of Gilead are out. So let's hit Gilead quickly. Gilead reported... Okay, adjusted EPS of 2.08, revenue 6.42 billion. EPS came in at... Uh, Non-adjusted EPS came in at 1.37 We've got uh, revenues coming in at 6.42 billion versus the estimate of 6.74, slight miss, and uh, the adjusted EPS slightly beating R&D expenses coming in a little lower than expected. So a uh, little bit of a mixed report here, and uh, sees fiscal year adjusted EPS of seven uh, of six dollars and seventy five cents to seven dollars and forty five cents, and the estimate was seven fifteen. That's about. Uh, that's about mid range. That's about right on. First Solar just reported. First Solar Solar reports net sales of eight hundred and three million versus estimates of seven hundred sixty nine point nine million. That's a beat of what seven eight percent. It's pretty good. First Solar EPS one ninety six versus eighty five cents year over year. Great growth. EPS of one ninety six beating estimates at First Solar. My and Microvision lost per share of four cents. A loss of $6.23 million with revenues of $479 million. Uh, I'm sorry, $479,000. Uh, Microvision has revenues of $479,000, basically no revenues, uh, and losses of about $6.23 million. Western Digital just reported as well. Let's go ahead and pull up Western Digital. Uh, Western Digital comes in. That's the hard drive manufacturer at an EPS. Whoa, adjusted EPS of 1.02 versus the estimate of 68 cents. It's a big beat on the adjusted, but the net revenue wasn't that much higher. Net revenue coming in at 4.1 billion versus 3.97 billion expected. Fourth quarter EPS uh, range given of 1.3 to 1.6. The uh, median estimate was 1.01. 
Q3, which was just reported, adjusted EPS 1.02, EPS at uh, 63 cents for non-adjusted. Q3 net revenue was 197 million, sorry, Q through revenue was 4.1 billion and net was 197 million. Uh, okay, good. So it looks like, uh, you know, a slight beat on Western digital. So treasury yields continuing to trend downwards. Treasury yields now at 1.6326. We covered uh, Amazon Twitter. Let's look at some of the fallout here. So Amazon doing uh, very well here, but uh, only up 3.5% uh, now. I wonder if it's going to Apple. There goes Twitter into the toilet. See, that's all it takes, folks. All it freaking takes is these companies saying, yeah, you know, growth might be a little slower going forward. And uh, boom, tanks 8.8%. I don't, I don't know. Neo was supposed to release in an hour. Did they already release? Stand by for Neo. I will check right now. I didn't even pull them up because, well, I thought they were going to report in an hour. Uh, yeah, no, there's nothing on, there's nothing on Neo. Uh, Neo's too soon. Okay, so back to the sticks. Uh, Wayfair up slightly. Amazon up 3.18 here. Trying to hold on here. Twitter is getting smacked. Microvision is getting beat up again. Not a surprise. We already knew that Microvision didn't have revenue. We knew this was a momentum play. And it's very important if you're trading it, keep that in mind. It's momentum, momentum, momentum. Trader, trader, trader. Uh, very, very common. Which it, it's it's always good to know. Are you in a momentum stock or not? Like, for example, Apple and Amazon, they're not momentum stocks. They dominate earnings and their, their stock barely moves. The stocks almost move kind of with the market. Well, they kind of almost are the market. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, momentum is like somebody could like, you know, uh, microvision. <laughs> so just, just know when you're investing in something, know what you're investing in. Is it momentum or is it uh, is this something more stable? Uh, so Amazon up uh, only about 3% now, giving up some of that initial uh, euphoric price action that we saw in the uh, after hours there. Let's uh, take a listen here to CNBC for a moment. Guys. Meg Terrell, Meg, thank you. What's been the story with this stock, Mike? Mike? Uh, I mean, long term sideways feels as often like a value <laughs> trap, not in the parts of biotech that really excite people, even though they have, you know, these incredible products. I mean, we saw Amgen, uh, maybe totally True. different dynamics, but mega cap biotech seems like it's a totally different animal than, you know, more emerging and, and, and those that are uh, in the in the sort of hotter, high, higher growth areas. So it's always looks cheap, Gilead, but, uh, you know, not really necessarily giving people a lot to latch on to in terms of catalysts. Paul Hickey wanted to pivot uh, away just from today's uh, earnings releases. What's your takeaways from all of big tech this week? Because everyone's beaten, but but some like Microsoft and Apple have traded lower off the back of big beats. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's a function of, I mean, look what the market's done. Look what's, uh, you know, what has been baked into the cake. We all have known that re these results were going to be strong. Earning analysts were raising forecasts uh, at a very rapid degree heading into earnings season. So, I mean, I think it's sort of healthy that we're not just keep going up and up and up on the same news. Uh, you know, we've had a great month of April. Uh, so even though we, we had a brief period uh, towards the end of the month where we had trouble getting through 4,200, but I mean, this market's been defying gravity for the last year at this point. Uh, it's been above, the S&P has been above its 50 day moving average 90% yep. of the time over the last year. And it's been over only oversold 2% of the time, 2% of all trading days in the last year. That is extremely rare looking back throughout history. Uh, it's only happened seven other times in the post-World War II period. What's interesting, though, is when you, when you get these types of situations, your first inclination is to think, all right, now we need to see a pullback to uh, get back on you know, to equilibrium. But what we've seen is you tend to see some short-term sideways movement, you know, moderately weak, moderate weakness to moderate gains. But over the next three to six, nine, three, six and nine months, uh, we've seen above average returns going forward, believe it or not. And one year later, following those seven other periods, the first day in the period, S&P was 500 was higher uh, all seven times. So I think uh, you could continue to see a grind out gains here going forward. Can I always count on you for that? I'm going to uh, just uh, chime in there and say it, it's so true that uh, – Sometimes the relative strength index is is something that we look at as as a tool for for investing. It's like, oh well, you know, something's overbought right now. But you got to be very careful because 
if you just rely on one signal as a trader, which, well, you know, most traders know not to do that. But if you just rely on like one signal and it's like, oh yeah, it's just, just the RSI, you just like, you would never buy. Uh, certainly not the, the S&P 500, but, but look at this, look at this. So oops, uh, right here is the relative strength index. It has been, it has been riding the overbought line. We had a, you know, the sell off in September, but otherwise it's, it's been riding the overbought line nonstop. Uh, in fact, it's kind of weird. It seems like it bounces, it nearly bounces off overbought over and over, and over again. We actually had a brief period of overbuy here. But I mean, when have we had an oversold, you know, I mean, oversold uh, on the day chart here, we go to March 2nd, you know, March 12th, uh, back in uh, 2020, we did almost have an oversold. Well, what do we have over here? Yeah, 37. Yeah, I mean, this is this is you could probably qualify these as oversold over here right before the election. Remember the fear right before the election? But I mean, otherwise, the S&P, like, you'd be, you'd be sitting here going, oh, no, it's overbought, it's overbought. And it just keeps going up and up and up and up. It's It's been incredible. Uh, it has been incredible for the S&P. They are not wrong to mention that. Okay, let's go ahead, give uh, Bloomberg a shot here. Bloomberg's talking Twitter. Let's give him a shot here. Let's see what they got to say. We're going to be looking at that company because remember, this was the first key player that came out and said, we are going to buy crypto instead of cash. We really believe in this particular area as an asset. We think this is going to be a reward. It's become this two-pronged effort. Square? This is a software company, oh, but also a play on Bitcoin. It's up three quarters of percent after hours. First quarter adjusting earnings per share beating at $1.54 versus the 82 cents of the two estimates out there. And they see a first quarter revenue of 123 million, basically, let's call it above the expectations. But Michael Saylor, seemingly that bet on Bitcoin working out for him at the moment, Taylor. Let's talk about a stock that just continues to crush it. It is Amazon, Caroline. Yeah. First quarter net sales, operating income, adjusted earnings per share, blowing it all out of the water. And they blow it out of the water in terms of that future guidance. Second quarter net sales, well above expectations as they give us guidance on what sales look like in the next quarter. Let's do it all with Poonam Goyal, Senior U.S. Retail Analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. And Poonam, what to say? They continue to show us how it's done. They absolutely do. You know, they rise to the occasion once again. Um, every angle, no matter where you look at it from, the results are spectacular. But I think what's most impressive is the guidance here. So consensus is looking for a 23% increase on the top line and the midpoint of their guidance suggests 25% um, excluding the foreign exchange benefit. So overall, that's just another sign that, you know, digital wow. continues to be at the forefront of consumers' mind. And even though the pandemic woes have slowed, you know, people are still preferring to shop online. That, I mean, that is really good, given that a lot of companies are issuing potentially weaker guidance that, ah, things might slow down, you know, now that we've had this big pandemic growth. Amazon suggesting, no, no, we're, we're here to stay and we're here to continue growing. Let's go ahead and uh, grab the sticks, see what's going on in the sticks here. So uh, stick-wise, we are, uh, I'm telling you, the, the favorite companies, they just they just slip in the after hours uh, after destroying earnings here. Look at that. Amazon only up 2.6% uh, now on uh, really smashing, riveting uh, you know, earnings here, really, really good for uh, Amazon. Nowhere near the blowout that we had at Apple, but still very, very, very good. So uh, then we have Twitter's down almost a complete 10%, seeing uh, seeing that end phase and uh, Pinterest reaction there, uh, just solely not because they beat guidance. I mean, they all beat guidance, but uh, their uh, expectations, uh, missed expectations for uh, the uh, for the future. Yeah, or, or lower guidance than expected, rather, would be the better way to say that. Microvision down 7.33%. Everything else relatively flat in the after hours, where after hours did just begin, obviously. But uh, we've got Tesla down uh, somewhere around that 673 range. Bitcoin, uh, BTC sitting at 52.8 right now. Ethereum, uh, Ethereum sitting at 27 and let's get a quick look at the Dogecoin. Dogecoin sitting still at 30.5, really holding on, uh, sort of rubber banding back to that level here. Yeah, no no report yet of any kind of Amazon stock split. 
Yeah, sure, maybe something like that would get mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised if that would get asked in questions and answers, though. Like Elon Musk said yesterday, usually earnings calls aren't the place to make announcements. So I would imagine they'll just end up blowing off that question if it ends up happening uh, or, or coming up in the earnings call. All right, folks. Well, uh, check out the program's link down below. Use that 39% off coupon code. We will see you in the next video. Thank you so very much for being here. Click that link down below. Get that lifetime access to those lectures. The price will be going up on Cinco de Mayo, and that's coming up very soon. Thanks, everyone.